In the world of small CPU coolers out there, it's pretty hard to be innovative. You can go either with the usual block of aluminum with a tiny fan on top, or you can try to make a U-turn bend and hope that the heatsink will not push away the RAM compatibility. For their C7 line of tiny coolers, Cryorig went kind of a mixed way. We have the black one, the white one, and the one that comes with free leukemia. But wait, there's more. Meet the original one that doesn't look like a AMD stock Ryzen cooler, the Cryorix C7 copper. So this is the Cryorix C7 CEU made out of pure copper, as you probably guessed if you didn't have 8 strokes yet. Before we go over the usual specs, a bit about the, the whole copper thing. Usually for the vast majority of coolers out there, the base of an air cooler will be made out of copper and the upper part, or the heatsink itself, will be made out of aluminum. Doing this uh, has a couple of reasons. First off, copper is boss. While it can transport heat at 233 of whatever this weird gang sign unit is, copper is almost twice as good at, at transferring heat from point A to point B compared to aluminum. However, while doing so, copper is significantly heavier, almost three times as heavy. This can be seen when comparing Cryorix C7 regular at 359 grams to the 675 grams that this little copper version brings to the table, fan and mounting included. And yes, this thing is really heavy. This is like, I don't even remember how heavy a U12A is, but this goes into this direction. So in the end, a manufacturer needs to start juggling around with, with these two. Do you want more heat transfer or less heavy and, and, and less expensive? But just imagine an, an NHD15 copper coming in at 3 kilograms. Yeah, good luck for the mounting. Now, on a side note, until now, for some reason, I had a, a memory of, of knowing that copper is better at getting heat up and transporting it, while aluminum is better at dissipating it due to its lower density. However, during the research for this video, I found pretty much the same amount of articles saying this was the case, as there were ones saying that this is bullshit and the real reason is just, you know, Coming in at roughly triple the price, it kind of makes sense that, that heat sinks are made out of copper. So yes, although there are probably a whack ton of reasons to do A versus B or aluminum versus copper, I can assume that the things that I've found, notably money, are certainly true. Copper is way more expensive and it transports heat a lot quicker than anything else. Come in the C7 copper, basically just a little chunk of copper with a white fan strap to it. The fan in question is a little 92mm wide and high fan, which is around 50mm thick. While spinning at up to 2500 rpm, this little sister of a fan is capable of pushing around 40.5 CFM at 2.8mm of H2O. To get the heat away from the C CPU, there is another block of copper glued to the bottom because there, there, there wasn't enough copper before. And from there the heat is pushed up to the copper heatsink using four copper heat pipes. The only metal piece of this cooler that is not made out of copper are these mounting brackets attached to the bottom. Speaking of which, compatibility. While on Team Intel we have compatibility for LGA 1200 and every 1150 as of now, on Team Red the list becomes quite a bit longer with everything in between the newest AM4 and the oldest FM1 socket. Inside the box you will get a real treat. Next to the usual mounting hardware bags for AMD and Intel, we will also get a syringe of thermal paste as well as this handy and absolutely necessary screwdriver. Now, if you have watched any of the, the Be Quiet takes before, you know how much credit I give a company that provides me with a beautiful screwdriver. However, if I needed to describe my installation experience with a C7 copper, I would say agonizing pain and the feeling of trying to piss out the kidney stone. To get the cooler mounted on an LGA 1150 and 1200, you do not need to do anything special, just splash some thermal paste on there and just position the cooler while the screws go through the mainboard, slap the backplate behind your board and screw it down using the nuts with the very handy and necessary screwdriver. In case you've got an AMD CPU, Cryory created a, a heavily thought through mechanic. First of all, we need to remove the screw that is closest to the center of the cooler on, on each of the rails. 
Then we need to flip the rail so that the other hole starts to align with, with the hole in, inside of the cooler. And then we need to remove the pre-installed, yeah, let's call it screw, and install that one on the other hole, the, the most outer ones for AM4 and the top ones for anything else. From there, it's the same procedure as for Intel. Thermal paste, position the backplate, screw down. Two tiny things. These screws are not removable by using the screwdriver or, or, or the, 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 the nut thingy. Uh, it's not really a screwdriver, it's a nut thing. Um, it is, the, the protruding part of the screw is too long, it will not fit, that's annoying as hell, and I need to take whatever I had left in the studio to, to make that happen, it's, it's annoying. That wasn't really the issue, the, the nightmare started after this. Um, imagine that your board is, is very slightly bent, I, I mean a, a millimeter, like I have a couple of boards that are slightly bent, notably my Z590 ASRock whatever that I use um, to benchmark small form factor coolers. The problem is, due to the, the screw protruding minimally, and I mean minimally, out of, of, uh, of the back of the board, and then you have to slap that that backplate on there, which is again, that's a, a, a very tight fit, and then you have the screw protrude even less. And if you then need to get that damn nut on there, it will not fit because everything is, is slightly off, and, 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 and no, it, it didn't fit, it was a nightmare. And even on a on a not bent board, like for example, the, the I don't even remember what I used, the um, the AMD one, the AMD for from, from ASRock, that one is perfectly straight, it, it's, it's like physically new, and when putting on the backplate, I still needed to pop it, 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 it was not, you know, it, it didn't just like, like fall in it. it, it was a horrible sound, I didn't like the mounting. The screws should be coming from, from the back up and you are screwing you know the the cooler on top of the back plate not the other way around the other way around is it's a horrible experience well after an hour of agonizing pain let's see how it, it managed to compete once it's actually on there letting it run at 100 percent fan speed the c7 kappa managed to keep the 10700k at 52 degrees c above ambient placing it 2 degrees C behind the Shuriken 2, which is not bad indeed considering the size difference. On the noise to performance graph, you can see that the C7 copper always stays a tick behind the Shuriken 2 from start to finish. However, it can beat both other coolers in either noise or performance. But funnily enough, the C7 copper line, it looks like it is the L9i just with a fan that can spin faster and faster and faster. Ignoring that supernatural occurrence, the C7 actually fits perfectly where, where I would have thought. Being close to 10mm lower than a shuriken, it is just natural that the C7 is always a tick behind the shuriken. Actually, I do believe that it was the copper that made it possible so that the C7 did not end up performing like a NHU9i. So where does all of this leave us? Well, looking at all of our small form factor or ultra small form factor coolers, the C7 perfectly fits into the gap. Performance wise, the list goes shuriken followed by the C7 followed by the U9i. On the height is the other way around actually, the U9i being the most compatible, followed by the C7 and then by the Shuriken. So in the end, when deciding between these coolers and you know the, the height restriction, you can just take the highest one that will fit and it will funnily enough also be the best one. It's, it's really freaking easy. But okay, this should be it for the Cryorook C7 copper. I hope you enjoyed it, but if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the Cube or ASCII. That little wooden case is the very reason why we got ourselves a, a C7 copper and it was in incredible hard to get here in Central Europe. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join and talk about the benefits of injecting copper into your, your veins in order to increase your body temperature cooling, that's the place. Anyway, I hope to see you in the next one and bye-bye.